Hey everyone, I was asked by one of our members in the Get Paid From The Stage program if I would do a video recording of me submitting a call for speakers and just kind of talk through the things that I think about when I'm choosing a conference and then how I pick the different elements that I'm adding into my call for speakers. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll do a screen share next and show you exactly the thought process that I go through. And also I wanted to let you guys know that I'll be posting this video inside of your cohort under week five. So if you ever look for it again, you can find it there. And every cohort in week five, I create a new call for speakers for open opportunities. And you can always find that spreadsheet inside the Facebook group. I'll post it there. So just search for hashtag call for speakers and you will find the most current list so that you can submit for your calls for speakers. All right, let's jump in and I'll show you what to think about when I am submitting my calls for speakers. All right, let's start by looking at the spreadsheet. So I would come to the spreadsheet and the first thing I'm gonna look at is here, the submission deadline. Some of these dates have passed. So this is our spreadsheet from March, 2022 cohort. So I'm gonna cruise down and get to things that end in with a, with a May 1st date. The next thing I'm gonna do when I'm trying to figure out which one of these I want to apply for is I'll take a quick peek at the date because there's just gonna be some dates that don't work for me. The name of the event, now remember, most events are going to have a place for you. It might be in the leadership track, it may be personal development track, even if the conference is about something outside of your expertise. But sometimes there's something about the name that will attract me, so I speak, to a lot of women's organizations. So if I see something for women, then I'm typically gonna gravitate towards that. The other thing that I look at is location because if it's here in Phoenix, I'm much more likely to apply for it or somewhere close by that I could drive to uh, because it's in my own backyard or if it's somewhere that I like to go to or vacation. So we have family in Tennessee Anytime I see conferences in the Tennessee, Nashville, um, or I can't think of the little town, Knoxville, that's it, um, I'll apply for those. All right, so let's kind of cruise through and take a look. And there are a couple of women's conferences. This one's kind of calling to me. National uh, Diversity Women's Business Leadership Conference. It happens in November, so it's still a little bit ways out and it's in Maryland, so okay, cool. I'm gonna click on this link and it takes me to the sign-up page. Now, for some of these sign-up pages, this is kind of interesting, I don't know why it does that, but it attaches to your email address and I always switch that to my business email. So now you can see my business email is here and I started filling this out a few minutes ago before we jumped on the, the call so that I'd have an example to show you guys. So you can see it's filled in. I've put my title as owner. As for my LinkedIn profile, what I do is I come over and I just copy this URL and then I come back and I paste it here under LinkedIn profile. Here's my website and then it says presentation title. Well kind of want to take a look at what the conference is all about before I submit for it. So sometimes when you click on this banner, it will take you to the conference. This one doesn't do that. So I did a Google search and found the conference. And here it is. It is for Diversity Women Media. And if you go to events, you see here it's got this event, so I clicked on event, I said take me to the, the Women's Business Conference, and then you can read and it'll tell you a little bit about the conference. It's for mid to senior level women, people that are seeking leadership and executive development, HR, talent leaders, male allies and sponsors. So it kind of gives you 
just a little bit of idea about what that conference is all about. So I know my talks and I now know which talk I want to submit for this conference. So the one that I'm going to choose is going to be Speaking with Confidence, Tips for Ambitious Women and Their Allies. All right, so I'm gonna go to the Speaking with Confidence folder where I have two copies of my proposal. So I have the PDF, which is the proposal that we created in class. So I'll pull that one up first. Um, that one just tends to be a little bit harder to copy and paste from. So I've got it that I can use as an attachment but typically I also like to keep my proposals in a Word document because it's just much easier to copy and paste from. So in this, this is my, um, this is my proposal description, my talk description. I wanna look and see how many words it is because sometimes they have a word count limit. And when you highlight, and I look down here, it's 144 words. All right, so let's go back the um, the abstract that they're asking for is no more than 150 words, so we're good. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to paste it right here. This one actually didn't format too badly. Sometimes the formatting is way off, but I am going to add my spaces. That looks much, much better. I just find it's easier to digest when it's spaced out. So the abstract is fine and they want a presentation summary. So this is where it gets weird, right? Three to five learning objectives and takeaways. And then it says, is this a skill development workshop or a best practice session? Well, it's a skill development workshop. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to take this section out and I'm just going to copy and paste it below because these are my takeaways. Proposal looks fine without it. I'm just going to pop it in there. And I'm just going to pop a note down here. This is a skill development workshop. Now they want a bio. This one is a hundred words. Let's go take a look at my bio options. Here are my bio options. I actually have a lot more inside of here. If you open that up, you can see quite a few bios. My most frequently used ones are here at the, at the, at the core. I like this one a lot, the Dream Enabler bio. It's only 50 words. The abstract says up to 100. I don't worry about using the full amount. This bio works great for me um, and it is, goes across both the strategic change consulting and dream enabler. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. It gives me a little bit of street cred because it shows that I do consulting and help professional women rise. So let's pop that in there. And then they want a headshot. I'm gonna select a headshot from my drive. I have a couple different options here. The passport photo size is a little bit smaller and it's cropped well. So that's typically the one that I'll use. Depending on the site, sometimes they will give you a size limit. Some don't, I'm gonna upload, we'll see what happens. Looks like that one was accepted. And we're gonna submit. My response has been recorded. So my proposal has been entered. I'm gonna take you back to the spreadsheet because what I like to do is fill in these fields off to the side. I add the submission date. I like to add the talk title because when I apply for a lot of calls for speakers, I don't always remember which talk I added a proposal for. And it's really awkward if you have to kind of try to figure it out through the discovery conversation. This particular conference didn't ask for the proposal fee and I don't really have any additional notes. Just to make sure that I know I've submitted for it, I like to color code it. So I'll come over here and highlight it and I will change the color. There we go. Now I know what I've submitted on my spreadsheet. Let's take a look next at searching for calls for speakers.
I'm going to search for Call for Speakers Women Com Women's Conference 2023. And these ads are going to be the first things that come up. Now I'm going to scroll down. I usually stay away from Eventbrite. A lot of times those are smaller events and it's really not, I haven't, well, I haven't found my ideal audience there. Here's one, Call for Speakers for Women's Council of Realtors. So let's take a peek at that one. And we come down, we take a look. Now we look at this first one and it's happening May 4th. That deadline's passed, the conference is like in two weeks. However, their national conference in Orlando, Florida is happening in November and that deadline is August 1st. So I can still submit the calls for speakers for that conference. I'm not going to submit the calls for speaker for this one right now. I might come back and do it later. You can see by adding qualifiers to your search, you can find exactly the type of conferences that you're looking to speak at. And there you have it. That is the exact process that I go through every single time I'm submitting a call for speakers. Remember, even if you get a call back and it's not a paid gig or it's something that just isn't lining up with your schedule, it's a great way to begin conversations with event organizers and get yourself out there as a speaker so that you can get paid from the stage. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Let me know if you have any questions at all. See you later.